Wow, thanks a lot, guys, for showing up tonight. This mind clinic with Dr. Chidiabere and Wachuku. And tonight in the house, we have our one and only wonderful guest speaker for today, the first class mindset man, the founder of Quint Impact, a lecturer with a difference, the man who makes a difference in everything he does. And it's all about making difference in your life and changing everything. You know, he's no other person but Daniel Obio. Before he comes up, I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about one or two things as relates today's broadcast. First class mindset, like we are going to hear, promises to change everything you believe about success. Success is beyond just the scores, the grades you see right there on the screen or when the results are posted for the undergraduates and students. It is an attitude, it's a lifestyle. And that's why we thought it wise to get someone who has experienced what it feels like to have a first class, who has lived it, who has felt it, who has practicalized it, you know, someone that has made it right up there. And so we are glad tonight to present to you the guest speaker for today, Obio Daniel. You're welcome, Daniel. <laughs> I don't think I can hear you. Maybe you, if you could change something. Hello. Can you hear, can me, you hear now? me now? Yes, yes, I can, can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Are you, are you with me clearly? Yes, sure. Are we good? Beautiful. I'm good. Yeah, so yeah, I you thank me you then. so much. Yes, I was clearly. Okay, that's great. That's great. Sure. Awesome. Awesome. You can have the so floor now. Means, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Chidi Berenwachku. I'm so excited and elated for this opportunity to be sharing with every member of this awesome community, Mind Clinic. You know, guys, uh, Dr. Chidiber has been a very amazing friend and uh, big brother and mentor to me right from when, we, uh, when I first got to know him more consciously as a young man while I was still in secondary school. He actually was that young man that inspired me to succeed in several ways. Aside from him, I had some other mentors, but he was explicitly unique, fabulous, and always setting the pace. So I'm so excited to be with us every one of us here in Mind Clinic. And I believe that the time we're going to spend together will be able to learn more than um, what is very random, what we consider random knowledge. We're going to see some very unconventional stuff that not everybody talks about. Or people talk about it in passing. But we're going to look at how real these things are and how real this truth is. Okay? So you are in for something phenomenal, I believe. And I'm sure your life is gonna not is gonna have a change and not going to remain the same as you came. So one thing you're gonna first of all do for us this evening, I really, really love to do this as I start my teaching, is to share. Share the video right now. There are some friends of yours that are meant to come and listen. There are some of those your mentees, your mentors, your siblings, your loved ones. Mention them, share to them, tell them that we are starting right now. So nobody gets to miss out. Everybody gets to find the meat of the talk and appreciates the knowledge that has been shared. Okay? So I trust you are doing that ASAP. I trust you are doing that ASAP. I trust you're doing that ASAP. Share, let your friends know that you are in. Let them know that we are alive. Let them know that we are alive so they can join. Okay? Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm sure you're doing that already. So tonight we're looking at something very profound, the first class mindset, the first class mindset, the first class mindset. We, there's, there's a lot to talk about the first class mindset, but you see that topic in and of itself has two sides to it, two sides to it. The first class and then mindset. There are two very broad spectrum, parts of a spectrum, very, very, very broad that um, if you're not careful, you may miss something out uh, about it and all that. So. 
we're going to look at it from a very holistic perspective so you understand what do we mean by first class who is a first class what is first class like we look at the concept first class what does it mean to the layman what does it mean to the exposed person what does it mean to the people who are still yet to understand life and get life in and of itself and what does it mean and what should it mean to you then we look at mindset and see the power of mindset the power of mindset in making us better the power of mindset in redirecting and reinitiating our lives our paths and also um making us become who we want to be who we ought to be and affect the kind of lives we need to affect or live the kind of life we want to live okay so those are the key things and then at the end we are going to look at the both of them the first class mindset like what's the mindset of a first class person when you see what do you see in somebody what kind of mindset do you see in somebody that makes you feel free enough to say that this person is a first class person like this person is a first class material this person thinks with a first class mindset this person is not just like every other person out there what do you get to see what do you get to see those are the things we would be considering in today's class okay so first of all let's look at first class the concept of first class the concept of first class so when you decide to run checks in dictionary in um uh, on google right when you try to run checks about what it means to be a first class there's something consistent that you get to see almost every time you you type that word as a such word on on google right whether you're using an offline dictionary or you're using an online dictionary, it tells you almost the same thing, almost the same thing at the same, every time, the same thing it gets to tell you. It tells you that first class has to do with the best quality. It tells you that first class has to do with the, the highest, the highest of something, right? It tells you that first class has to do with the best of whatsoever it is. So when you say something is first class, you're saying, you're indirectly saying that this is the best of these that you can get, right? So first class to a large extent is safe for us to say that first class is used to, um, how do I put it now, refer to things that are at their best states, right? Things that are at their best states. I know we live in a classy society where the beauty of recognition or the best way to recognize things is to classify these things. So you easily know what is what, why what falls into where it falls into. So you dignify the kind of classes we have in the society. Like we have the low class, we have the middle class, we have the first class, right? So th this, this goes through a lot of spectrum, a lot of things. You come to the aeroplane, like that's the airplane, and you get to see you're, you're buying a ticket. And the question is, do you want to buy economy? Or do you want to be, buy first class? What's the difference between the both of them? You get to agree with me that the difference most time is the kind of service. Is the same vehicle? Is the same plane? Is the same pilot that is driving everybody? Is the same um the same air hostess? Uh, in the like everybody on the crew are uh, going to take those that are buying for economy class and those that are buying for first class or business class, as the case may be. But you get to see that there is something unique about first class. It's not the same cost with economic class. So it tells you there is something classy in first class or about first class, right? So you get to see that the, 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 in several sectors, okay, you also come down to um, the academic grading system, which is more of the very con um, conversant place where you get to hear the word first class, where almost every time you hear first class, it's more of students graduating with the best of grades, like having a first class grade, right? That's what almost comes to your mind every time. But you see, today we are gonna to see that first class is not just about grades. It's true, it is rather about classification, classifying something as the best of its kind. So it's gonna, you're gonna see how there are points when people don't get the best grades per se, but they've learned the best things They've gotten the qualities that they need to get the best grade, but sometimes circumstances just deal with them or get get on them, get at them, and voila, something happens and they don't get to achieve that stuff they really, really anticipated or wanted to have. Right? So 
you get to see that in the whole of all this, first class is not associated with mediocrity, right? It's not a, associated with mediocrity. It's not a, a, associated with average, and it's not associated with the ordinary. It's not. It is unapologetically coined to dignify the best. And that is just what it's about. So it refers to the highest class or the premium, right? Or, or premium. When, when you talk about premium service, you're talking about first class service. When you talk about premium knowledge, you're talking about first class knowledge. When you say this is a world class citizen and taught, you're talking about this person being a world class citizen, a first class citizen by thought and order. So I want us to break that meat by understanding, first of all, the concept of first class. Circumstantially, like in our African society, and in fact, in the ac academic world generally, because in the right truth, it's about exceptionality and excellence. It has almost been the best and only definition that people literally give to first class. But you need to know there is a lot more to it than just that. The fact that we have it in several other industries tell you that it's not always about paper certificate, but you get to still see a place of paper certificate in all this. So let's go along, uh, along uh, um, this line with story about um, my life and the, the, some points in my life where I had um, the first class grade by paper and um, the things that struggle taught me, especially when I look at the life of some of the persons who didn't have that grade and who are still amazing doing so sufficiently beautiful outstanding things that every other person around them are not doing. I happen to have graduated um, with a grade that I'm going to tell you about. <laughs> so while I was in the secondary school, finishing my secondary school, I had all this, I had an elder sister who was in the university. So I had information about what happens in the university, but not in depth though. So at that point, I also had friends I had friends that we are reading the university who had graduated from the university, who had studied amazing courses and who we are being rewarded. So I, I wasn't new to the concept of first class as a grade because at least I knew about all distinctions in YAC, right? So I knew about that being um, the secondary school version of a first class and then that there is a university part of a first class. So while I had struggled, or rather, I had walked towards having a first class secondary school academic life such that I had the nine distinctions in why I told myself, I ain't going to let my university days also fall short of that. But you see, it meant a lot. It meant a lot, but I had several challenges around it. OK, so when I started from 100 level, I took that decision. I had to take time to ask questions. What does it take to be a first class graduate? What what does it take? Uh, then I started understanding the concept of calculating GP, understood that there's a difference between GP and GPA. You get a point. Like that moment we are still JJCs and uh, we just wanted to get first class, something like that. So um, my story is different because there are some persons who never entered the university with the mindset of getting a first class, but at the end, they got a first class. So you're going to see also at the end of it all, that beyond, it's not just about having the decision before entering the university or having the decision before doing anything, but it's about getting to a point of consciousness of what it really means to be a first class graduate or what it really means to have a first class mindset. That's what we're talking about today. Okay. So down the line, I had a very wonderful first semester. Uh, second semester was better than the first semester. Um, 100 level, that was 200 level, got into 200 level. And the CGPA got into what I was told was a first class CGPA. So when we got into 200 level, um, man, I did my best. I did my best, but it wasn't funny. I tried. I read. I, I had a lot of engagement, a lot of engagement while I was in school. Because I'm not the random academic guy that just goes to class and reads more TDB. I don't do TDB. The first time I tried doing TDB, all in the name of doing TDB, you guess, guess what happened? I felt so disappointed. A size that mosquito dealt with my life, I also understood how much that was a sham. <laughs> right? Like 6 p.m., you're seeing guys are rushing, rushing to class. Everybody's carrying their bags, and your level students and all that. Man, I felt like, bro, you guys do this if you guys pass. 
Man, so one of those days I decided to do the same around 6 p.m., 6, 7 30, 7 p.m., 6 30, 7 p.m. I followed them to the class. The pressure, I followed them. Fam, while I was sitting, I started reading. Between the hour of 7 30 till 9 p.m., I was still reading. I noticed around the nine, okay, from like 8 30 till nine, all I noticed were people that came to class with biscuits, people that came to class with. Um, gala, people that came to class with coke, people, in fact, it was an eating spree. <laughs> so everybody was just eating. <laughs> like, did this guy's got to eat or to read, right? I was following the pressure at that point because I just felt that was what it means. And I can tell you, there are a lot of people who want to get a first class and the feel is about following people to go and read. When you understand that that's not what a first class means, you understand that you don't have to go to ninth class before you make a first class, right? And you don't even have to have a first class grade before you have a first class mindset. And the mindset matters more than the grade. From before the hour of 10 p.m., I found out that all those that went to class with their big, big bags had turned their bags into pillows and they were sleeping. So I was still reading, but guys were sleeping. So I'm like, so you guys sleep till like 6 a.m. and wake up and come back and everybody's calling you guys hyper. Like you guys are readers, you've overread. Unknown to them that you went to sleep, making your bag your pillow and your engine max your pillow. Like it was crazy. It changed my mind. I refused to go for night class and all that. I didn't, I wasn't that guy that read all oh, everything, like crammed and all that. No, I read to understand. I attended the, the lectures. I just made sure I knew something about what I'm being taught. And to a large extent, more than what my mates knew about it, because at least I went to the library. To just get some information primarily at that point. It was until my 300 level that I got more deliberate about understanding that beyond reading to pass an exam, that there is a need for me to read, to learn, and to become better. What happened? I had the opportunity to travel out of the country. I represented Nigeria and my university at the um, World Universities Debating Championship, right? And that was my 300 level. I had just gone through 200 level, right? So I met this student that was in 100 level computer science in the United States. She came for the tournament. So in my mind, like senior colleague, computer science, I was feeling like, yeah, how are you? What are you guys learning? Man, she started telling me things. Things she was telling me they were learning 100 level. I do not have hope. There was no hope that I was going to learn those things in final year. Like, I've not even seen it in scheme of work. I've not even seen it anywhere that spells out that this is likely going to be what you would ever be taught. But in 100 level, somebody noticed it. At that point, I started asking myself a question. Who is my competition? At that point, I told myself the truth, that my competition is not my colleagues. It's, they're not my classmates, my classmates. That my, co my competition is actually the world. And in a situation whereby I'm not going to be taught just things that I need to know to compete with those that are out there in the globe. Do I read, do I read to pass exam or do I read to know so that I can express this knowledge wherever I find myself and stand the chance of being the best whenever I'm called out to represent my field? Bro, at that point, I decided to take reading more seriously. I decided to be the best in everything I did, even if I was not going to get a grade for that. I decided to start understanding the place of a first-class mindset, and it led me to become better. So that, that's just part of a story. I'm going to tell you what happened in 200 level before 300 level. But before I get to that, let's talk about the power of mindset. The power of mindset, because like I told you, that experience did something. It worked on my brain. It worked on my psyche, right? It worked on my mind because it got me thinking. The mind is a powerful tool. Is a powerful tool that controls our thoughts and executes intangible actions while spurring us towards physical actions on our thoughts. You need to understand this. The mind is more powerful than even your body because it's your mind that programs what your body does. It programs what you do physically. It programs what you become. So at points where you want to do anything or become anything, you must first of all become it in the mind. And by the time you become it in the mind, you can actually manifest those things and find yourself, your physical abilities, your physical actions, spurring and walking towards those things. Okay? So an understanding the first class has to do with the best 
highest quality of anything and understanding that the mind is a tool that controls our thoughts. So a first class mindset is easy to understand that it's all about having a mind that is powerful enough to control your thoughts, to execute intangible actions and tangible actions in the highest quality. So it's not just about great guys. So, but, but what happens? You know, I, I'm a public speaking coach and I do public speaking a lot. When I teach people about public speaking and tournaments, competitions, I tell them, don't speak to win. If you speak to win, you're going to be so careful about losing and you're likely going to lose. But speak to inspire. Speak to build blessed lives. Speak to be a, a, a blessing. Speak to rewrite the story of somebody life, somebody's life. So you, you see, when you speak to bless a life, you end up becoming the best because, like, it's just you just can't help. De by default, excellence flows from that concept. Excellence flows from that mindset, and you get rewarded with the best grade, right? You get rewarded with the best grade. So it's more of a, of the mind. The point when you set the mind a right to think and process thoughts in the best capacity, in the best quality, you find yourself having a first class mindset. And most times you get rewarded by a first class grade. You see, it, it reminds me about the law of attraction, right? That, which has to do with the ability to attract into our lives whatsoever we are focusing on. The law of attraction uses the power of your mind to translate whatever it's in your mind into reality. So when you've developed the mind of being a first class, of giving your best, doing the best, having the highest quality of whatsoever, in your mind, it spurs your actions to be uncommon actions, unconventional actions, and you get rewarded. So a first class grade, to a large extent, if it was gotten on a platter of truths, Reality and legitimacy, to a large extent, is a reward for having a first-class mindset. It's one of the rewards for having a first-class mindset. That is the truth. And if there is anything you should prioritize, it's a first-class mindset, because that's what can get you a first-class grade. Fine. So let's look at first-class beyond the grade, so you get to understand this better. Like I earlier had said, it's very easy to relate with first class as an academic grade. But the truth is, why first class is expressed as a grade academically beyond grades, grades, first class is a mentality. And that mentality, like I just said earlier, sponsors the effort that fetches the grade. Come on, did you get that? I mean, I say that the first class mentality, the mentality of a first class thinker sponsors the effort that fetches the grade. I'm sure that today, I'm not speaking to just students. I, I, I know a lot of us here are likely not even students. And don't feel that this is all about or, or just for students. It's not primarily for students. It's necessarily for whoever wants to make a difference with their life. You need to understand whether you're in business, whether you're in sales, whether you're in whatsoever you're doing. <laughs> if you must be categorized in the class, remember what I started with, that we live in a classy world, in a world where everybody's categorized on class, on the class level, right? We have VIP, and today we now have VVIP, right? We have low class, we have third class, we have first class, we have all those classes because that's the kind of society we live in. So beyond grades, whatever you are doing, you must aim at doing the, being the highest, having the highest quality, and the mentality, the mindset sponsors the effort. It pulls you into the effort that fetches you the grade. Let's come down to the academic part of this and even the normal side of this. The grading system is really insufficient in metrics in ascribing the first class status to people of intellect, especially within the African space. Understand this. Why is it so? Because there are several things when you come to the academic environment, there are several things that come circumstances and consistent that, that, that can consistently hinder several people from clinging the grade. I know somebody who was my friend and roommate sometime while I was in the university. He didn't graduate with a first class. He was on 4.4999. Like, it's crazily painful. Like, it's painful. Somebody is now going to say this guy is not a first class because he didn't have a 4.5. But I can tell you that that boy is awesome. He's brilliant. He's, he's, he's so intelligent. He's 
very, very, very intelligent. I mean, he was actually the best in his department, right? So you get to see there are things that affect the grade that makes sometimes you don't even claim the grade. That is why the grade is not just the best way to describe somebody as a first class. Why it's part of what is necessary in describing people as first class, but you need to go on for beyond that, right? There are things like health errors due to non-automated calculations of CGPs and GPs and all that. Sometimes it's issues of victimizations, natural disaster interfering with you, issues of emotional downtimes during examination. In fact, in life, the, the, Several students, when such circumstances get eliminated out of their lives, you find them clinging this grade. Are you not shocked or don't you get surprised when somebody graduates with third class in a place like Nigeria and the person goes outside the country to do exactly the same course? When I mean the same, I mean exactly the same course. And this person makes a first class. Don't you get shocked about that sometimes? Man, it's, it's, it's something that becomes very, very shocking. But it tells you that circumstances sometimes affect the first class grades in and of itself, right? So the, the, there are people who fly first class without even having money to pay. So why the grade is making sense? But understand that you don't always have to have the grade before you have a first class mindset. And if there's anything you must go for, it is the mindset beyond the grade. There are people who get jobs that first class graduates don't even get. People are very qualified. And they don't get even when they have a first class. I know a lot of first class graduates that are roaming around looking for jobs and they've still not gotten. So it's not about the grade on the standard. Today, your certificate brings you to interview tables. But the truth is, what grants you access is actually your certificate. Certificate, what you can do, right? What you can do. Statistics of the success rate between paper certificates like of first class graduates a non-first class graduate reveals that there is more to the labor force entry than just having a paper certificate of a first class. So success in life is not even tied to a first class grade. And I'm sure you know this, but a world class mindset that creates innovation and engages in principles of success. Come on, I'm going to say that again, that success in life is not tied to a first class grade but to a world class, to a first class mindset that creates innovation and engages in the principles of success. But having said all these things, I need to let you understand something. You still must go on for the first class grade. Yes, it's not about the grade, but you've got to go on for the grades. You've got to go on for the grades. You've gone to go on. For the grades. Fam, see, being getting an award in Olympics doesn't need you to come first. Right? You if you come second, you got a silver. If you come third, you get a bronze. But aiming for bronze for gold helps you get the award. That's the truth. In aiming for gold helps you get the award. So people who get awarded at Olympics are not just people who participate in Olympics. It's people who aim for gold. So even if they don't get gold, they probably get silver. They probably get bronze, right? But you need to understand that. So why gone for the great? Number one reason why you need to go for the great is you, you need to understand this. The great is a destination that has a path and inspires a lifestyle. I remember when I needed that first class grade. After my 200 level first semester result came out, that was, it wasn't the best, but it wasn't worse, but it was like the best in the department to an extent. But second semester, it wasn't funny, guys. Second semester, I don't know what happened. That people who I taught had A's in three credit unit courses, about three of them. But I had C's in those three credit unit courses. And you can imagine what that meant, right? And then there was an A, there was an E, uh, and now we escape from an A, from a course that we were not taught anything in that course. It was quite painful. It crossed my CGPA from a 4.6 to almost a 4.2 CGPA in the university. From, it was the worst phase of my life that I couldn't even imagine what exactly happened. I, it, I was, I was, 
I was down. I was all down, all shit took down. I had to talk to people. I shed some tears. Yes, I did. I had to talk to people. I asked questions. Was it still possible to still have a first class uh, certificate and a first class grade at the end of it? Like, I, I just didn't know it was possible. But I spoke to people and they told me, they reminded me I had like four more semesters that I should still try, that it's never um, too late. But fam, at that point, I knew it was going to take a Herculean tax. It was likely going to be 5.04 times before that kind of ever work. So I was on the verge of giving up before I remembered that whatever is worth doing is worth doing well. I was on the verge of giving up before I remembered that I'm not necessarily going for the grade, that what I should necessarily go for is for a mindset of a first-class graduate. So that even if I don't get the grade, I can be reckoned with as somebody whose thoughts are first-class thoughts, whose actions are first-class actions, whose way of thinking and reasoning are world-class, unconventional, and uncommon. And at that point, I decided to start aiming for the best in life. So like I said, the grade is a destination that has a path, and the path to getting the grade inspires a lifestyle. So it tells you, if you aim for the grade, you are going to indirectly, unconsciously and consciously get onto a path that will need you to exhibit and live a lifestyle. So if you must have the lifestyle of focus, if you, have, if you must have the lifestyle of a first-class mindset, then you must aim for the grade because the grade is the bait. The grade, I say it again, the grade is the bait. The grade is the bait. The bait is the catch fish. Yes, the grade is the bait, right? That bait that draws you to living a life of a, a lifestyle of a first class graduate. It's the grade. The bait that draws you to living a life of focus is the grade. The bait that draws you to being determined, to having staunch determination, is the grade. The bait that draws you into a mindset of going the extra mile and seeking to do what others are not doing, seeing what others are not seeing, hearing what they are not hearing, thinking the way they are not thinking. It's the grade. The grade is the bait that draws you to a life of diligence, draws you into a life of excellence, draws you into a life of integrity and doggedness. Right? The truth is, those requirements are unnegotiable components of success and a world-class excellent outcome. So the grade is a trigger. It's a bait. It pushes you and invites you into the process. So look at your business today. Where are you? Are you where you can be? How about who is the first-class person in your, in your business space? Who is the first-class person in your niche that you're working in? Who can you consider and say, man, these guys are first-class? Who can you consider? Let me tell you, you can never get to be like them if you don't get to aim for the grades that they are sitting on. That five-star ranking that you see their businesses have, it's the grade. But you see, beyond the grade, there is an attitude they have. There is an attitude Facebook has. There's an attitude Google has. There's an attitude these guys, Microsoft have. There's an attitude these guys have in their field that makes them keep topping their chart in their field. They have the five-star rating, which is the grade, but beyond the grade, they are sustaining the grade through an attitude and a lifestyle, the mindset. The grade inspires the lifestyle and the mindset, right? First class, <laughs> so understand this. Why does grace, we live in societies where a lot of things happen and things go underwater and all that. And some people get to pay their way into having first class grades. Obviously, you know, such people don't go through the process. And when they don't go get through the process, they don't get the benefits of those that get through the process. So they just rush and get by a certificate without being able to defend it. And you never want to even be in that kind of crossfire. No one who intentionally and legitimately guns for the grade ever misses having the mindset. That's why I say you need to gun for the grade. Why the grade is not everything? Why the grade does not define if you're a first-class graduate or not indeed? Because of a world where a lot of compromises exist, right? But the truth is, no one who intentionally gone for the grade ends up not having the 
mindset. And this makes it such that even when the grade is not gotten due to prevailing factors like we have earlier mentioned and slim chances, the mindset is built. The mindset is built. I saw this movie. I just finished this movie quite, um, today. Um, the un- Undercover Billionaire. If you've not seen the movie, you really want to see the movie, especially if you're into business, The Undercover Billionaire. Wow, is a piece of beautiful business sense that can change your life and transform your business. Now, at the end of it all, the aim was to make $1 million in 90 days. The, 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 the guy didn't make it. Glenn Stans didn't make he, he His business was evaluated for 750 But I must tell you, every member of that team was able to say, indeed, we have built... like. It was almost not a regular thing. It, it was unconventional to even have a business evaluated at 750 billion, um, 750,000 um, 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 within 90 days, like from the day one of the launch of that business. It was quite r- r- rare and not there. But because there was a mindset of a first class, there was a mindset. He was, he was aiming for the grade. He was aiming for the grade. He didn't get the grade, but everything that went through the process became part of what they needed, the mindset to build that business. And I can tell you within the next four or five years, they must have hit more than 10 million US dollars because they went, they gone for the grade and all that. So know this, the first class mindset is a mental attitude. It's a way of thinking, right? It's a way of thinking in the best and the highest quality. The first class mindset is a mindset that seeks for excellence. It's a mindset that goes for gold. It's a mindset that grinds for beauty from ashes. It's a mindset that embraces the pains of the process that leads to gains and a lot more. This is what the first class mindset does. And these are things that you're going to find yourself doing when you are going, going in for the grades, right? The mindset cuts across a lot of aspects of your life gone for a first class mindset in your spiritual life gone for it in your academic life gone for it in your in your financial life in your social life in every sphere of your life because it's a mindset that produces excellence is a mindset that exudes high level of productivity and gains satisfaction from doing what is worth doing in the best standard that is possible so after what happened to me in 200 level, when I fell short of the first class, I felt like my world was crumbling, but I had to tell myself that question, bro, why don't you do the best? Why don't you just be the best? At that point, I developed one of the best quotes I ever use in life at every point. So anytime anybody asks me my best quotes in life, this is it. To be the best, you have to beat the best. To beat the best, you have to do your best and leave the rest. But friends, you know, I get to learn something. Sometimes while you're trying to beat the best, circumstances happen. Sometimes when you're trying to be your best, you may not end up being the best you want to be. But the question is, did you really go on for the best? Or did you just give up because people say it's not possible? People have not traded it. Those that tried it, they failed. They were unable to, hey, people going to say, it's like you hear people say things like hitters will hit and potatoes will put it and whatsoever they say. Guys, the question is, did you go on for the best? The first class mindset is primarily about going for the best. From my 300 level first semester, um, because I now had the mindset of getting the best, giving it the best. I didn't stop doing things I was doing. I didn't stop representing my university. I didn't stop um, being a leader in the fellowship where I was. I didn't stop being um, a debate coach like a co-founder of a debate institution and a coach and trainer and actively debating. I didn't stop all the stops, but I upped my game at being the best in everything I was doing at that point. So that same semester, the 300 level semester, I had the best grades. Like it was like a 4.86, right? Second semester was a 5.0. The the 400 level first semester was also the best of the department. And then it just went that way to the end. And at the end of it all, What happened? You will get to know. But I want to let you know that at that point, I was no longer just going for the uh, um to make sure I get um a first class degree certificate. 
at that point, I was like, even if I don't get it, it's better I give it the best. What's your business like today? Are you at the point where you tell yourself, even if I don't get ranked on Google as the best business in Africa. I must do my best and put in the best and be the best and build the right standard. Even if people don't buy from me today, a first-class mindset delivers whether people are watching or not. That's what a first-class mindset does because it's a mindset that seeks for excellence, goes for gold, grinds for beauty from ashes, embraces the pains of the process that leads to gains and lots more. So let's get to the very last part of this. So you get to ask the question, how do I find out? How do I find out? How do I find out when somebody is indeed, how do I, what, what, what do I see that can help me know that this is a first class mindset? What do I have to add to myself? What do I need to work on on myself? So that people can look at me and identify me as a first class minded person, as, as a world class thinking citizen. Even if my certificate is reading a second class or a, first, a, a third class. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. You can have a third class certificate, but you have a first class mindset. It's true. I'm sure, I don't know how many of you have read the book that talked about why A students work for C students or something of that sort. I can't remember exactly how it, it is. You get to see C students creating the jobs because some of them gone for the first class, but Money was not available. They were, they were struggling at the same time, paying their fees and studying. So they just couldn't attend all the classes or do all the CEs to have all the A's. So they didn't have all the, the, the first class grades, right? But the hustle, the struggle, the effort, the point through, the process built their mindset because they didn't give up on going for gold. That's why you can see them still employing and building and building stuff that are lasting. Right? So I want to tell you why it's important for you to go for a first class grade, even if you show for, sh uh, fall short of it. Build the mindset. When you start building the mindset, whether you get the grade or you don't get the grade, you will have the mindset. But when you don't aim for the grade, you're likely not good. You're likely going to be distracted by a lot of things and a lot of circumstances and a lot of um, distractions and distance attractions around you. So let me run through these things. What are the key things that really you see? How do you identify first-class mindset? How do you identify first-class mindset? How do you identify the thinking pattern? Like what thinking pattern do you see and say, oh boy, this is a first-class mindset. I need him in my team. She is a first-class mindset. I must hire her for this business. He has a first-class mindset. I need to strike a partnership with this person. What do you identify? What do you see? Number one. The first class mindset understands purpose and cultivates the necessary passion in achieving that purpose. It understands the why he or she is doing whatever he or she is doing in whatever phase of life he is in. That's the truth. That is how you find out people who are first class, have the first class mindset, the first class mentality. They understand purpose. If you live without purpose, you know, it says that when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable, and it is as true as true. Like as true as T R O U E, true. A first class mindset knows why am I doing what I'm doing. They make sure they understand their why so that they are not easily swayed by challenges. They are grounded in, in why they are doing what they are doing and they are not easily swayed by the challenges that come their way. That's one thing you used to know a first class mindset. Number two, you see that these people understand momentary failure, that it is a part of the success equation. A first-class mindset knows that it's not a sin to fail. Like, it's not a, a sin to fall short of your goal. It's not. It's part of it. It's part of it because it is in not achieving that you understand what cannot be done. When you review, when you review your inabilities, when you review your shortfallings, your shortfalls, your shortcomings, your mistakes, your challenges, your setbacks, you are able to know what you shouldn't do how you shouldn't do the stuff, right? I think it was Edison who, after he failed several times, said that he had learned 999 ways not to make a, an electric bulb. Come on. You say he failed 99 times, 999 times, but he tells you now, I didn't fail 999 times. 
what you saw as 999 failures are actually 999 ways not to produce an electricity bulb. The first class mindset knows that setbacks are part of life and that the most important thing is not just about failing, it's not just about having the setback, but it's about how you bounce back. It's about your bounce back. It's about your bounce back. That's the mindset. The mindset understands is why. The mindset understands failure is interesting. In fact, I decided to write a post sometime about the imperative of failure. The imperative of failure. If you don't understand the imperative of failure, you will not appreciate the uniqueness of success. I'll say it again. If you don't understand the imperative of failure, you will not understand the uniqueness, the beauty, the beauty of success. You will not understand, you will not understand the efforts that bet success. You won't understand it. You won't value it enough. That's what a first-class mindset does. So the moment you start understanding this, you will start under, you start gradually building that kind of mindset, and it translates into your academics. So when you even fail a course or you don't get the A you expect in the course, you still get to see I must do my best, and I need I need to learn how not to answer questions so that I don't have a C again. I need to learn how not to do this so that I don't fall short of this. I need to learn how not to sell to people so that I don't run $5,000 ads and at the end it's not converting. When you understand that this is a part, you will not hang yourself when you fail. Do you understand? Number three thing you see about the first class mindset is it is a passionate learner. A first class mindset person, someone that has a first class mindset is a passionate learner. Wants to learn. Like I told you my story about uh, well, after my 200 level, I, I got to that point where I didn't want to read to pass examinations. No, I, I didn't want to read to pass examinations. The first class, th th that first class mindset, it, it, the person who has that mindset studies to know and stand out with his superior knowledge. So somebody like um, John Obidi, you know, John Obidi, you know that guy is a first class guy. He may not have graduated first class certificate, but oh boy, you can't deny the fact that he has a first class mindset. He's a passionate learner. People like um, one of my friends, um, uh, Hector Ikena Okechuku, very be brilliant, beautiful, amazing soul. You may not have graduated first class, but come on, when you hear these people think, talk, you know that he's a passionate learner, reading everything to know, and he stands out. They stand out when they have conversations. You have superior knowledge. Go for gold, guys. Go for gold. Go for gold. And you will not have stubbles if you go for gold. Another thing about the first class mindset is that they engage life's principles with a determination to give their best, regardless of what the previous outcomes may be. Somebody who has a first class mindset does not listen to what the senior colleagues say or decide that their life is ruled by the news he or she have had about the past. Nobody makes an A in 422. Hello, are you nobody? It says nobody. You're not nobody. So since you're not nobody, you are a different. A lot of things happen. And you need to understand how life can be guided by several outliers. An outlier can exist that is going to give you these things that every other person fails. They cannot have. You must, a first class mindset understands and engages life's principles with determination. He gives his best, he gives your best, regardless of what previous outcomes may have been like. He doesn't water down the standard. He doesn't compromise on quality, even if current effort seems not to be yielding results. The first class mindset will not water down on what is standard. My friend and roommate that year would always say, bro, don't give up on the goal. Don't change the goal. When things are not working the way you expect, change the strategy. Change the strategy. The strategy is key. The strategy is what you can change. So far you are sure of your goal and your goal is the beautiful goal. So far that goal is what has been born out of passion and purpose. You don't, first class minded people don't change the goal. They change the strategy and they gradually become, okay? Number five you see about first class mindset is anybody who has a first class mindset continuously learns lessons from phases and experiences, events, and intentionally implements those lessons learned. You know, I had a conversation with a very wonderful, God bless me with a lot of amazing friends, right? I had a conversation with one of my friends recently, and she asked, what have you learned within the past uh, six months of your life? Do you have friends that ask that kind of question? 
dear friends that ask you that kind of question. You have to surround yourself with people thinking in first-class ways. Like Those are the kind of people that can help you grow. That's the truth. A first-class-minded person will not surround himself with people that doesn't care and will not help the person grow. So my friend asked me, what have you learned within the past six months of your life? I said, okay, there's a lesson that has been recurrent over the past one year of my life, not just six months. And what is that lesson, that, that, that stuff? It is to do my best to make sure I learn from everything that ever happens to me. Everything that ever happens from. And a first class mindset learns lessons from every phase, from every experience, from every event. And beyond learning, you intentionally implement those lessons. And he would always ask questions. You're curious. A first class mindset person, a first class minded person is always curious. He wants to learn and he wants to do something with what he has learned. You always have to ask yourself, what do I learn from this? You broke up with your guy, what do I learn from this? Your business failed, what do I learn from this? You are no longer able to get what you expected, what do I learn from this? You earned the money you expected, what do I learn from this? Things you wanted didn't work the way you wanted them, what do I learn from this? If you become somebody that is willing and very, very curious about learning lessons from phases, stages, and experiences and events, you are definitely going to be a better version of yourself and a more informed person in your world. I hope I'm making sense. I hope you're gaining value. I hope you're gaining value. I hope you're gaining value. Come on. I want you to share this video. I'm sure there are people who want to learn, who didn't, who don't know that this is happening, and you would want to let them know. Mind Clinic is a very beautiful place for great minds. Let your friends know about this. Fine. Let's move over to the sixth thing about them. The sixth thing you need to know about first-class mindset and first-class minded people is this. The think of creative ways to implement lessons. They think of innovative ways to solve problems and they make solutions relevant to their environment. <laughs> See, there are a lot of people talking about the problems in Nigeria. In fact, we have more conversations about the problems of Nigeria than the problem itself. Like the number of people talking about the problem with Nigeria are more than the problem itself. Like the number of conversations that goes on on the on Instagram, on Twitter, on the social media platforms about the problems of a country, the continent like Africa. Like the conversations are much more than the number of problems itself. And the question is, what are we doing to solve this problem? What are you doing to make a difference with your life? What are you doing to make the rest of your life the best of your life? What are you doing to make sure that things are different from the way they've been? A first-class minded person looks for innovative ways to implement lessons, looks for innovative ways to solve problems, and tries not to be part of the problem to be solved, but makes a solution to the problems around. They make themselves relevant to their generation. They make their life solutions to people's needs. They become people of value. Like they don't pursue money, they pursue value. Come on, they don't pursue money, they pursue value because they understand the principle that money is actually not very important as value is. Why? Because money in and of itself is paper. What gives paper value is the amount of exchange it can do, what it can be exchanged for, right? Understand this and no peace. No, money is a receipt for value given. I say, money is a receipt for value given. So, first class reviews don't, first class minded people, mindset, people with first class mindset don't pursue money because they know that if they pursue money, they may have to go into Yahoo Yahoo. They may have to go into fraud to make quick money that will not last. But they understand that they have to pursue value because it's from value that you get the money. When you exchange value, you get them. Very true. Number seven, first-class minded people are avid readers. They read a lot because they want to get knowledge. Do you understand the world-class productivity habits? And they install such habits in their lives. They empower themselves to become very better persons in their life and in the world right? They don't play small. They read a lot because a lot of knowledge is hidden behind the pages of books. And first-class minded people are well-groomed leaders. Number eight, they think bigger than they are. 
more than their contemporaries. They don't want to do what every other person like them are doing. They don't want to do what every other person their contemporaries are doing. They go the extra mile. They search to see what others are not seeing. They listen to hear what is cast to the ear. They act on things that others are scared of doing. They act in ways that are considered unconventional and uncommon. The moment you start living this way, you find yourself developing the attitude. It, it flows from within you. It flows from within you. It flows from within you. The moment you start living in this with this mindset, and you kind you, you get to see yourself clinging the great. You get to see yourself being it, even if you don't have the great. You see yourself being reckoned with first class intellectual capacity, knowledge, and such capital. The next number nine, you see that they are focused on excellence and execution of goals. They focus on ex ex excellence. They, they don't want to settle for mediocrity. They don't want to settle, settle for the average. They don't give up trying. They don't give up and say, let's just take it like that. Anyhow, let's just manage it. Anything, whoa, ah, I've tried. I've done my best and they failed me. I failed this because I'm, I'm not first class. I, I, I would have been 4.43 and, and just a meaning point, 07 to have a first class. And said, I should still, in fact, I've given up. I am not reading again. Let me go and catch crews. No, 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 no. That's not the Daniel, matter. you can hear yeah. me? Yeah, I can we hear can't you. We can see your video. I think some people are mentioning it. Oh, really? Is there something can you, you can do here? Yeah. Uh, maybe let me get to, um, um, can you see it now? Is it back? Try and, no, no, no. It's still showing a blank space. Okay. While we are waiting for Daniel to, to come back so we'll be able to get the video and the full broadcast, so much value has been dropped already. He will soon be right back. So much value, so much value. First class mindset, what you got to do is not just about the grades, but the grades are important. So while you're chasing the grades, you cannot afford, um, you will get the mindset in the process of chasing the grades. So he's right back. Hopefully, Yo. we'll be able to get a better broadcast. Welcome back, Can you Daniel. See me now? Yeah, sure. Can you guys see me? One oh, so sorry. Sure. I hope that didn't happen for a long while. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. That must be a network glitch somewhere. Welcome back. Thank you so much, bro. Thanks, yeah, man. Go ahead. Yeah. So, like I was saying, they are focused on excellence and execution of goals. They, they, they go for their plans. They go for their tasks. They zero in on achieving the best of whatever they are engaged in. Am I being heard? happening the goal for the goals and um, the goal for goals they keep their eyes on the prize and they avoid being distracted they avoid being distracted you don't you don't get to a point where you say ah let me give up on this thing or uh, ah, i'm i'm close to i'm close to uh, if i'm just close to in fact i'm not going to get it again you don't get to that point and say ah, ah this class is is 4.50 and i'm currently on 4.43 uh, in first semester, two hundred, um, three hundred level over four, and say, in fact, there's no way that I was that. Uh, they failed me and all that. I can't. Do, but let me catch crews with my life. No, you don't do that. The first class minded person understands that it's not necessary. See, the grade is not what you just want to get, right? It's a bait. Remember, when you want to catch a fish, you use a bait. So the bait helps you get the fish calm, right? What you want is not a first class grade. Is actually a first class mindset, but the mindset helplessly, unapologetically brings goodness, excellence, and exceptionality to you and rewards you with the grade and everything that comes with the grade. Do you understand? So, focus that they can defend their actions, right? That they can defend their actions and their convictions. A first class minded person is willing to bear the consequences of their convictions. They are willing to bear the consequences of their convictions. The, it, it, and you know, for you to be willing to bear the consequences of your conviction, it means you have to be consistent with your values. You have to be consistent with your actions. You have to be consistent with your methods and have a deep commitment to always doing the right thing. So you, you see that it's a beautiful life. It's actually a world-class life. That is the truth. It's actually a world-class life. Having a first-class 
mindset. And finally, I'm going to say in this list of things you got to see or things you have to work on to have the first class mindset. Number 11 there, which I intentionally left as 11, is they know the source of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to be God. Um, I would never do a teaching online, like a live teaching of this kind of sort, without letting people understand that the world-class thinkers and leavers live from a paradigm. You see life from a paradigm. And the paradigm is the perspective. It's, um, it's, the, it's the view. It's your view of life. It's your world view of life, right? Everybody has a worldview, but they are very consistent and common worldviews that you get to see in the life of people who make significant differences. And one of those worldviews is a Christian worldview. You may want to argue with me there are people who are not Christians that have, to a large extent, made some level of success. But I would be able to quickly draw you to the truth that they actually got to where they are because the lived principles, principles of success, principles that to a very large extent became societal success principles that when you look at them truly and critically, you find out that they have a root in the Christian faith and the convictions of the Christian people, right? But whether you are a Muslim or you are Buddhist, whether you are an atheist or excluded, uh, excluded to an extent, Every other member of every other pantheistic religion or theistic religion believes in the existence of a God. And if you understand and believe that there is a God, like I do believe and unapologetically believe, you will get to understand and know also that God is the source of wisdom, the source of knowledge, and the source of understanding. And first-class minded people understand this to be true. And they consistently seek his intervention to remain world-class in their existence. Why does it matter? Remember we started with saying that they always find out their purpose and work within their passion to ensure they fulfill and live their purpose. You can't find purpose outside God, right? Because he is the one that created you and created you for that purpose. So for you to have a first-class mindset, you need to go back to the source of your creation, of your purpose, seek wisdom from him to execute the purpose, seek the resilience for him to stand in understanding and knowledge. These are 11 things first-class mindset people would always do. These are 11 things you get to see, a combination of almost all of them in whoever who claims to be a first-class minded person or someone with a first-class mindset. You can be a first-class mindset. You can be a person, a person with a first-class mindset. You are created to be a person with a first-class mindset. You have the capacity. It's in you. It's in you. You were not created a dummy. You were not created for the less. I remember this. At the extraordinary, the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is extra. And the extra there is actually this 11 habits, this 11 attitudes we've talked about. If you can engage it, I promise you, I promise you, you are not going to be like your equal. You are not going to be like every other person around you. You will rule your world. And like I would always tell my friends, you have to make intentional actions in making a difference, making the rest of your life the best of your life. So apply this to your business, guys. It's not just academics. Apply this to business. Apply this to your academics. Apply this to marriage. Apply this to spirituality. Apply it to your finances. You don't deserve to be at the bottom part. You deserve to be at the apex. You deserve to be a hero. You deserve to be at the zenith. You are created to be the best. That is who you are created to. And if you here are a Christian, I want to remind you one thing. The Bible says something in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 19, that the endless expectation of the creature, everything created, everyone created, awaits the manifestation of the sons of God, right? So everybody around you is earnestly yearning, cringing, waiting, expecting your manifestation. And you can't manifest as an ordinary person. You manifest with the highest quality, the best quality, because even God is a first-class God, right? So at this point, I'm going to tell you, fam, be intentional or you will be forgotten. Thank you so much for having me and I hope you gain value.
Wow, 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 wow. Come on. <laughs> it's been a wonderful session. Power packed. I mean, one hour of so much value. Thank you so much, Daniel, for showing up. And not Thanks. just showing up, for showing up so strong. First class mindset. I don't know if there are people that have questions right there among our viewers. Drop the questions. We, um, we'll have Daniel to answer them. Drop your questions quickly. But while we are waiting for the questions to show up, let me just run through a number of things he mentioned during the broadcast. Wonderful points, wonderful points, wonderful points. Any question that comes right now, we'll broadcast it and an answer will be given. We are waiting for your questions, so keep dropping them. The first class mindset. First class mindset. He has run through a whole lot of stuff. I just imagine how he felt when his grades went so low. It was almost like giving up, but he did not give up. One thing winners know is that life comprises crests and troughs. So nobody stays at the top every time. No, nobody's always at the crest of the waves, like we've heard from the broadcast. We are going to have ups and downs, but we should be ready to bounce back every single time. He spoke about the concept of first class, the power of mindset in the becoming process, the first class beyond grades, getting the mindset. You know, we have students today that just focus on their scores, their grades, scoring high, having a B, having an A, and all of those. But it's beyond that. Is building the personality, who you become in the process of getting the first class, ends up being more important than the grades. See, if they dash you that first class grade and you step into the world, the first person you meet will expose your ignorance and your carriage, your personality, everything about you will show us. Boy. This is not you. <laughs> Am I right, Daniel? <laughs> sure, like it's going to be a, a classical embarrassment to your dignity and your existence because you can't defend it and it's crazy when you can defend it. So it's very important what you become towards the process. It's very important what you become. As a clinician, sometimes you hear stories in an aircraft and someone passes out and they are looking for any doctor here, you have a nurse, a medic. If you have told the person sitting beside you, <laughs> I'm a medical doctor, and you guys are just in and you are feeling good about yourself, <laughs> and someone faints or collapses or passes out or has a, an MI, and the person is looking at you, so you say you're a doctor, go do something. It's not the talk. It's what you do when the, the chips are down. It's what matters. You understand? So exactly. it tests you. You're able to spring up at that point, take um, hold of the situation and solve that problem. We will show everybody. You don't really need to tell them again that you're a doctor. You've already displayed the skill, the person you are. And that's what mm -hmm. life is about. And I believe that's the reason why so many of the Nigerian graduates are having problems in the job market today. We have people with grades but with no commensurate skill to, to show defend for those grades. You understand? Now, mm -hmm. someone comes out of school and he crammed through the process. He was just focused on exams. In fact, mm. we hear of people that go, go to the market to sell the various big markets we have. Mm. And then go mm -hmm. to the exam, they come back to school and cram what every other person has learned and read and try to internalize. And when yeah. they've done that, they go and write exams and maybe even pass. And then you ask, they're, they're asking others, what are you people doing in school? We just come and write exams and pass. It's beyond the being in school. There's a saying that as you pass through the school, let the school pass through pass you. Through you. Are you getting it? So yeah. such people, the school has not passed through them. And when they graduate, you might still see them behaving like the market people they've always been with. They spent most of their time there. They did most of what they did there. And the, the lifestyle of those people ends up still being their lifestyle. They are not refined as an individual. There is no change in their thinking pattern and process. 
sometime today, I was having a chat with my wife, and I mm. told her, see, the WhatsApp group that we create for graduates from, let's say, UNN and Uniport and all of those schools, it's not yeah. the same things that we discuss, that people from Covenant, Babcock, oh, you know, really? they are That's not discussing truth. the That's same thing. That's the truth. <laughs> They That's are not discussing the same thing. The topic for discussion is different. And that's what the mindset is about. It's beyond just grades and school and sure. all of that. The kind of mm -hmm. people you meet. I, I read or I think I heard a story of someone who mentioned mm. that one guy came back from, from abroad for mm. his class reunion, his school re re reunion. And then yeah. he met some guys in Nigeria and all of that. Mm. So he thought, you know, some people from abroad keep feeling like people in Nigeria are not doing well. They are just mm, ordinary yeah. people. <laughs> he was shocked that the person he was speaking to, by the time he got to his office, the protocol required to see him was so extensive. And by the mm. time he saw the man, the man told him, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going for a meeting right now in Abuja. Oh, boy. Can you join me? And then he took him to a private jet. <laughs> When he got there, he met other MDs of banks and other big people who were also going the same way. And they began to talk. Someone asked him, what do you do? He said, I'm into this and that, but currently mm -hmm. I'm a motivational speaker. I train people and all of that. And mm -hmm. right there on that plane, he got deals worth millions mm -hmm. and millions of dollars. People oh, were signing. Okay. okay, can you come and train our staff? Are you getting it? Mm -hmm. It's about... Mm -hmm the location the mindset the person you have mm. become if that person mm. is a poor minded person even the end you will not take him to that plane yeah you keep speaking on this like we will spend two hours on this so let's I'm take the question you. i think there's a yeah. person on the screen now i don't know if you can handle it so yeah we'll i can see it it says in the posture of first class mindset doesn't mean we compete with ourselves that's the previous wins or do we need to have someone else as a competitor speaking in line with the quotes to be the best you have to beat the best okay you see there's two sides to this question there are two answers to this question the question the answer is yes in two different ways and also no it's yes and also no now it depends on who exactly is the best at the moment that you're looking at now there are things about growth that are personal personal growth in, when it comes to personal growth and times when you want to measure your own personal growth, the best thing to do is primarily to ask yourself, who was I, who am I, who do I want to be? So at that point, the best you have to beat is the old you. The best you have to beat is your previous wins. The best you have to beat is all the glories that you've ever recorded and everything about you in the past. That is who you have to beat at that point in time, right? But now, when we come into the general space, when we come into the general space where you are primarily trying to, let's say, for instance, you are, you've come for a competition where there is a defending champion. Come on. The best person you need to meet and beat at this point, the first class mindset you should have here in, in, in the quote of beating the best to be the best, it's not previous you who have not competed or who is competing for the first time. At that point, there is a viable competitor. Do you understand? So the question is, what is your viable competitor? Who is the, what is the most competitive thing that deserves to be beaten to become the next person you need to be, the best person you need to be? But when you develop the mindset, you get to see the mindset even helps you to understand that even beyond the people, beyond the people, it's yourself. It's your, your old self that tries to pull you down, your pessimistic nature that tries to make you believe that you cannot achieve that win. So at that point, you're dealing with two persons. You're not dealing with yourself physically now. You're dealing with your previous mindset or pessimistic tendencies in you. And then you're also dealing with the physical person because at this point, we're looking at the physical reward. At this point, you're looking at the physical competitor right but when we are not talking about things like your personal growth your personal development your scaling scaling your influence your scaling your influence at that point you're beating yourself you're beating who you've been before 
So there are two sides to it. The question is, who is the competitor? What are we looking at? What side of the coin are we looking at here? And what is to be, to be dealt with? But you see, at the end of it all, you get to that point when you see that in pursuit of a first-class mindset, excellence is key, right? Excellence is key. And excellence messes with mediocrity. Excellence messes with mediocrity. So the question is, where is the mediocrity found? Is the mediocrity found in you or is it found in somebody else? Is it found in things around you or is it found in yourself? The question is, what do I want to become? Do I want to be excellent? If I want to be an excellent person today, that means I'm competing with who I was yesterday and competing with every other person who also wants to be excellent today. When we are to be um, judged, when we are to be judged on a platter, like on a panel of individuals and all that. So it has that two sides. You are competing with yourself, being better. And also the real truth is, there are times when you also have to compete with people. But the truth is, when you're competing yourself and making yourself better, you end up finding yourself aiming higher, doing what others are not doing, beating others, and you just find yourself winning them even unintentionally, right? It works in that way. Yeah. And I think I didn't even get to add, fam, at the end, I know that was the part of the story I didn't add. The, the grade ended up being a first class grade. After the struggles of second, of third level, the grade ended up to be a first class grade. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Well, thank you very much for handling that question. I think there's one more question yeah. I can see here. Let's see um, okay. what to do. From Daniel Esther. I, I would love to know if your environment can in any way affect the mindset. Daniel Esther, your environment to a very large extent affects your mindset. That is one truth. But there is a second truth many people don't tell you. The second truth they don't tell you is that you can be in whatsoever kind of environment and have a first-class mindset. But the only difference here is this. It will take a more intentional action and life. So I tell people, when you have the capacity and the decision-making power lies within you to change that environment, happily do. You hear people like Jonobidi tells you, get to Lagos. You hear people tell you, leave Jakpa, leave Nigeria and get to places where they are in sinner climes. But the question is, what if you have things that are tying you down where you are, somewhere deep down there in Edo State, right? That makes it hard for you to leave. If you are somebody that understands passion, your purpose, first of all, and you know the passion, have a passion driving you, and you know your why, you will be inside of that village in Anambra State and make the money that will make Ubi Kubana's friends come and buy from you. Do you understand? Like, people have upturned societies that are considered to be um, unviable. It took them extra pains. It took them extra um, power, extra extra effort and all that. But it's possible. It's possible. There is really nothing the mind conceives that it cannot achieve. Your environment has a way it can affect you. If you have the wrong set, see, let me tell you, even if you are in the wrong environment, the worst you can ever do is to have the wrong people around you. Because once you have the wrong people around you, forget it. If you're in the wrong environment and have the right people, you can make sense. You guys can become like um, iron sharpening iron and give yourself some level of strength to pull through and work together and create a heaven out of your earth, right? But if you're in the wrong environment and have the wrong people, you are completely finished. That is the truth without apology. So where you can work on leaving the environment, fine. But when you have a reason to stay. But you see, I tell people, don't be in the haste to leave an environment that seems unfavorable. Sometimes what seems unfavorable in that environment is actually a problem aligning with a solution inside of you in a magnetic way telling you you have the capacity to solve this problem. That is why sometimes what you say, ah, you're very much bothered about. People around you may not even be bothered about. It. You're bothered about it not because you are so unique uh, or you know something more than them. Sometimes it's because there's a solution in you that is crying for expression to deal with that problem. So you need to be sensitive enough to understand when you are actually in the wrong environment, 
And when you're actually in an environment that is considered wrong, but actually you are the right person to change that environment and make it favorable for every other person. So if you can understand that, and God will help you really understand that. So if you can understand that, you leave that environment as much as possible if you can. If you can't, do your best. So finally, on that question, I'm going to tell you, just like Mr. Chidebe just shared, right? Dr. Chidebe just shared about the young man that came in from the abroad, the abroad. And I was expecting his colleague to be in a very, like in Nigeria now, ah, Paco, um, with the kind of government and everything, system field and all that, and not being, expected him not to be anybody. You see, that guy understood the uniqueness of his environment and decided to be a lily in the mare. So he told, tells you the possibility. What makes you unique is that in the center of your colleagues, in the midst of your friends, you're doing what they are not doing. You're seeing things the way they are not seeing it. And the global space has made it possible that you can watch videos, you can learn. I stay in Abia State currently, right? But I tell you the truth, I'm trying to join organizations. I try to join WhatsApp groups of masterminds of people in Lagos, people in the United States, people in Abuja. I get myself into networks of people who are thinking differently from the way people in my area are thinking. So I can rub mind with them. And in my own locality, I subconsciously emit a level of knowledge that is first class to them because of where I've engaged in. So my environment could have affected me, but because I keyed into a higher environment, I was able to gain value. But it's not easy, guys. It's not easy. It only takes an intentional mind to be able to understand that this dynamic, to know when to leave, when to remain, how to anchor on very strong networks that can help you build that environment and when to really tell yourself the truth and jackpot, like Dr. Chileberry <laughs> has jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Daniel. You see, the yeah. concept of environment is so powerful. Yeah, very wherever very. you are. In fact, it is the right mindset that oftentimes will pull you out of the wrong environment and take you to the right, right environment. Exactly. You know, when, exactly. when you're in a place, decipher. Exactly. If you're in a place, over time, you realize, I don't belong here. The kind mm. of friends around you, when you speak, what they interpret your thought process your thought is, how process. they do that ah. you just know that this is not my circle you may mm -hmm. even belong to that whatsapp group maybe because they are your classmates or something but you can't contribute to the things they are discussing because mm -hmm. it does not make sense to you anymore your mm -hmm. mindset has changed even mm -hmm. if you know when they talk about money if you have changed your mindset financially you see mm -hmm. the loopholes in their discussions you mm -hmm. see what's happening you will realize you cannot even communicate your thoughts to them. These things force you out of the wrong environment. Straight up. And if you keep Straight staying up. in the wrong environment, they can stunt your growth and prevent exactly. you from becoming what Who your you mindset is pushing you to become. Towards, yeah. But in the long run, in the very long run, you need more power to maintain a positive mindset in the wrong environment. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yes, you exactly. Work. You need to know when it's time to walk away. <laughs> exactly. If not, you you'll a, crumble. If you're in a war-torn country, the most important thing at that time is safety, security. Definitely. And so your mind, your thought process, everything, if you hear a loud sound, you think it's a gunshot. That's your oh, mindset. Bomb. And then you are... The fear paralyzes your critical mind, your creative mind, and you are unable to really become what you want to be. So that mm. environment, in its own way, is influencing and affecting you. But to come out of that environment, you also need to change your thought processes, your you mindset know. itself. You can feed your mind with positivity, with success thoughts, with motivated thoughts, with the right thoughts. And when you do that, you find you begin to to focus on beautiful things wonderful things and the law of attraction like was stated in this broadcast we become our thoughts we attract the things we focus upon and Real. so when your mindset is positive and mm -hmm. has changed to higher living higher thoughts mm -hmm. your life will soon begin to adjust towards those things very well very well very well. And so, so Esther, you uh, need to also get, yeah, just to add something, Esther, you need to know 
that staying in the right environment does not guarantee you have the right first class mindset if you don't intentionally build the first class mindset. So there are people who are in the United States of America, yet they think almost in a pessimistic way because they find themselves in a place where to you is the right environment, but they are not harnessing this environment enough or building the right thoughts around it. Okay, so know where you should be. The right mindset, in fact, directs your thoughts, directs your location to a large extent. Because, what, see, no matter what they tell you, let me tell you, destiny eh, is location sensitive to a very large extent. It's very, very location sensitive. You almost cannot do beyond what your, lo your location is. So that's wisdom to know when to stay, when to leave, when to grow, and how to redirect yourself is very, very important. It's very, very yeah. needed. We have about five minutes more. I would like to drop mm -hmm. this piece of information. You know, okay. of recent, I've been reading a lot of books on finances and all of that. I've come to realize most of the billionaires and the millionaires in dollars and all of that we know. Mm -hmm. When you listen to them, when you read about them, they the ones that have written books, you get to realize something. The money they have today is mm. not all they have. It's not even the most important thing that they have. Many of them will tell you, take this money today and give mm -hmm. me time. The money will mm -hmm. come back. Mm -hmm. The process of becoming a millionaire affects your mind. It changes your thoughts or becoming a billionaire. It changes your thoughts, your lifestyle, your spending habits, your thinking process, your business acumen has to improve. Your communication, yeah. your sales, your analysis, critical thinking and reasoning, human relations, all these things come into making money. Sure, and sure. By the time you make that money, you are already a transformed person and it's beyond the money now. It's now you. The billionaire is the greatest, the greatest, um, um, has the greatest value to his company. It's not the money mm -hmm. or the stocks. He's, a, he's an asset, the greatest asset to his company, his brain, his mind, the way he thinks. And that's why you bring a business proposal to him in 20 minutes, in five minutes, he's able to tell you whether it will work or it will not, not work. He has changed his mind. He can, he's hard to fall into fraud for such a man, for such a person. I understand. So he has been transformed, his communication, his sales ability, his business acumen, all these things have been changed on the path to becoming a billionaire. He's now disciplined. He spends money wisely. These are things you would normally teach people. And he would say, no, just tell me what you are buying and selling to make this kind of money. But it's beyond that. The guy had to change. And so who you become in the process, the process of becoming, like we said, as you're trying to become a first-class person, the process converts you <laughs> the process of getting the first class grade converts your mindset to a first class mindset, mindset. and your person you you become a first class individual huh. and so i don't know if you have a parting word for our viewers this evening it's been wonderful really so yeah one more word okay. one last word for them okay guys so um it's an amazing time to have shared this with you guys and i'm sure um your being here today tells how much passion is you about being a better version of yourself. There would always be, like I made a post quite recently today on Facebook and I, I just felt led to make that post. And it's about reminding young people that there are always going to be the down times and the up times. We, every great man is a product of highs and lows. The question is, what do you do with your highs and what do you do with your lows? But to know how to work with these, you need to develop the right mindset. The becoming process is more important than who you become at the end. You can rob a man of his money. You can rob a man of his gold. You can rob a man of whatever he has, but you cannot rob him of a mindset he has because it's that mindset that can reproduce that stuff over and over and over again. So as much as possible, you can't do any of this. You can't be, 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 have a first-class mindset if you don't get intentional with your life. Get intentional. Stop being normal. Like, when I mean normal, I mean like every other person. Stop being ordinary. Go for extraordinary. Go for the best. You deserve the gold. 
you deserve the gold. You deserve the gold. So be intentional or be forgotten. That is my part. Oh, wow. Wow. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please, let's drop thank you, thank you, thank you in the comment section. Lots of it. Lots of it. Thank you very much, Daniel, for showing up today with us. Um, before oh, we sign out finally, I would like to um, remind our guests all our viewers, that this is Mind Clinic with Dr. Chidebere and Wanchuku. And today we are hosting a first-class person, a, a, a man with a first-class mindset and a first-class grade, you know, um, on the show. And then every month we do this live broadcast and we've promised to keep bringing people of quality and substance to impart upon our viewers and the members of our community. Even though we shared this video outside the community, it's all over the place now. But we try our best to bless the lives of people in Mind Clinic. So invite your friends through the group invite link, share the links, get them to join the community. We are about 3.6 thousand now. You know, get them to join the community and be blessed. We drop posts from, from time to time almost every day. Beautiful, valuable um, write-ups and videos are dropped on the platform and people's lives are being transformed and changed. We're getting the testimonies from inbox, from the comment sections. People are being changed. So Mind Clinic is a place to be. And also, the speaker for today has a group. He's the founder of the Quaint Impact Initiative. One minute, please. Can you tell us more about your community, Daniel? Okay, so the community is Quaint Impact Leadership Hub on Facebook. That's what that's the name. But the organization in and of itself is Quaint Impact Initiative. So if you just go on Facebook right now and type Quaint Impact Leadership Hub, Quaint is Q U I N T, Q U I N T. Um, he would type it and you'll see it there. It, it's a leadership group. The idea, the idea for that is to build a community of young leaders changing the world, grooming iconic leaders who understand that you can be whatever you want to do, be and do, irrespective of the sphere, irrespective of the sector of the world you are working in, right? So it's a leadership hub where we share contents on personal development, contents of leadership capital building, and contents of productivity. Want to turn next your productivity, want to turn next your personal development, want to help you understand what it takes to be unconventional and unique in a world where every other person is going crazy about every other normal thing. We raise people who are intentionally making a difference. So if you want to find our post or my post, you will always get it with your hashtag. Almost every post that comes from me and in the community ends with hashtag quaint impact, hashtag mad advocate. And when I talk about mad, it's about M-A-D, making a difference. So it's a group for people who have taken a decision in their lives to make a difference with their lives. That is what we do. That is what we are about. Thank you very much, Quinton Park. Yes. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. We love you guys, and we hope to keep seeing you on the community. Keep being blessed and keep making the rest of your life the best of your life. We're signing out now. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Daniel, and thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Mr. Thanks for the thanks for having me. Have a great day. Good night. Yes, sir.